Okay, so this is the dubstep mug. Let's look at the model real quick. We have the mug solid model, and then we have the dubstep words that are engraved in the front of it. Inside of it, we have a speaker, and on top of that, we have these bands that are meant to simulate kind of the pulsations of sound uh, resonating from the speaker, except in 3D. So let's roll back the history and I'll show you how I modeled this up real quick. I started off with the Revolve and that's kind of the strategy I end up using the entire model. I'm going to open up that sketch for you real quick. You can see it in blue here. I took these measurements off of a mug based on my desk just using my finger and uh, pretty much just came up with these measurements here. So, moving on, I created this. I realized it was a little rough, so it adds a little bit of fillets on the bottom. And then a bit of a dome shape, which is what you would see in a ceramic, uh, a ceramic item. Moving on, we have a couple more fillets, and that smooths out the top and the inside. This top fillet is a bit unique. I'm going to show you that. It's a full round fillet rather than a radius fillet. So you click on your outside face, you click on your top face, which is item 3 here, and then your inside face. Moving on now to the handle. First step I do is I create a plane two thirds of the way up, and then I use another sweep that I base off of a couple of sketches here. One's a bit of an oval. Um, because it's not completely flat on the bottom and top here. And then a sketch in the shape of the handle, even though it goes inside of the mug at this point. In order to remove that inner part, I use a split command. I'm going to show you this real quick. Edit the feature, and now I get into here, I click the face, is what I'm going to use to part. Then I consume cut bodies on the inside of this handle. That's where I click right here and that will remove the inside of the handle combining this outer piece here into the solid body so now I have a mug. Now I have a couple of variable fillets and you'll notice if you ever look at a mug the top fillet is a lot sharper than the fillet to the inside of the handle so I'm going to show you that real quick. I, bas I just clicked all the way around this oval and then at each point here, I entered a dimension. So I entered a much smaller dimension than I did for the bottom two here. And that gave me my variable fillet that represents how this handle is actually merged to your mug in real life. So now let's move on to the wrap where I'm going to import the word dubstep and I'm going to emboss it onto the face of this mug. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plane. and This plane is offset from the front face of the mug that I want to work on. So that way I have a sketch plane that I can now put my words onto. Now this is the wrap. As it's done, I right clicked on the inside faces here and changed their appearance. That was for when I went into Keyshot to do my renderings. But for the sketch, which is created on that plane, I found a text I like, and then I created this spline here, which I stretched out, and you'll notice when you go to put in words, they have matched a curve. So here you got curves, and that's where I click on my spline to create that non-linear shape, give it a little bit more character. So, let's move on now. Now I wanted to create solid bodies inside of these embossed sections where I can then take that and I can apply a material like glass so when I render it it will really pop. So in order to do that I'm going to use the surface offset command. So I right click on this, go to edit feature and what I got here is I just click on these planes which whatever distance I want it to go or rather it's going to be the inside or outside. So I click on all these faces here that are adjacent and it's going to create a bit of a mm, like a shelled face. 
and then I'm going to seal that shelled face with a surface fill, which is another standard surface command. Now, if you get paid by the hour, you can go around and you can click each one of these edges, and then when you misclick, you can forget it, clear it, and go again. Or you can right click on these loops here and select select loops. And I got a video where I show you how to do that and where all those chains and easy selections can be made. So now that I have a surface on the bottom and the top, I know I can knit those two together and create a solid. So I go ahead and I create this. I do the rest of my letters, which I'm just going to fast forward through. So now I just use a surface knit. I'm going to show you this. I click on the outer face here and then the shelled face on the underside. I turned off my gap control in this case, tried to form solid which worked and merge entities. And there you have it. I have a solid body that is offset from the inside of my letters here. Moving on, I wanted to create the speaker on top. So let me zoom around to there. Now I looked at a speaker online, I noticed we had a couple of rubber on the outside, a cone on the inside, and some uh, paperish material that's in between the two. So I changed the color here again, so I went to render it, I could select that as its own. And then I added some fillets in between here, just to smooth things out, and that's how it looks in real life. So then I can apply a rubber, and then a matted material and then a yeah, plastic or rubber again in the center. And now for the domes on top, or the speaker pulsations. I created three domes, which I used a revolve command again, which is the same process I used for the speaker and the mug. And then I moved on to the cut extrude, which is more, actually it's a cut revolve. And for that, show you this sketch real quick. I started with a base angle here that I liked and then I created offset of that line here of equal distance so everything that comes back to the center is going to be equal and then I created a progressive by five degrees for every cut it revolve I was going to do um, so that way it's symmetrical as it goes around and yet expands so it's it gives it a better look, is what I feel. And then finally, I deleted a small body that was down at the top of this cone here, which you can barely see, but it's right there in the center, because it just didn't look right. And you'll notice when I go to show you the render that I hid every other solid on the outer ring, and then I did the opposite. Uh, for the medium ring and then I did the same for the center. That way it gave it a bit of a... it wasn't so obstructing. And that is how I modeled the dubstep mode.